Hi, I'm Jane Hogarth from Placemate Architects. I've been a renovation architect in Brisbane for 30 years. We all know that one of the best real estate strategies is to buy the worst house in the best street. And if you hang in there long enough, you get lasting value. That is a great policy. And in fact, especially with Queenslanders, they're in a in a city and they're guaranteed 100% that they'll be worth more 10 years down the track than they are now. But a lot of people look at renovating them and that's our expertise, but there are traps in this and this is strategies that you should look at if this is the way that you're thinking of doing for the house that you've lived in for a while or a house that you're buying. Now, if you're buying, please get a pre-purchase inspection including a really detailed town planning advice because certain areas are very strict. Now this house is in West End, it's got some of the most stringent town planning character rules that you can have. So just taking out windows, raising the house, there's this cascading effect of the town planning rules in this that make it quite onerous. The other things that you need to look at, in Brisbane, flooding. Check your side boundaries, check how far away you are from a main road for acoustics. If you're on acreage, flooding, bushfire, ecology, all of these things need to be addressed. And don't forget, not planning approval, but building approval for unapproved works that the previous owners may have done over a long period of time. It means that if you touch that house, you might have to fix up the previous work. That's all fine, but it's just expensive and it's a hidden cost into the renovations. Now, if you're thinking of buying a Queenslander and renovating it for a return, this is a bit nuanced, but this is what you do. You can, this is a pretty ratty looking Queenslander. It's in a great area. It's a three bedroom, one bathroom house with a bit of a carport. You can get a quick return by making it a very nice three bedroom, one bathroom carport house. You just paint, you do up the bathroom, you do up the landscaping and you put it back on the market so someone can just live there. That is real value. But if it's, this is your home and you want to stay here for the long term, then you need to, the three bedroom, one bathroom ha house anywhere is not going to cut it. You need to turn it into a five bedroom, three bathroom house with a double lock up garage and a pool because that's what all your neighbours have. Now that is lasting value, but only in the long term. In the long term, you've got what everybody else has, but in the short term, it's a big hit and there's no return on the actual renovations. Now, not only are there build costs, but there's a whole bunch of other costs that come in after the build. Now, if you're after lasting, uh, lasting value, then make sure that you've accounted for these other end costs at the end of the build so that it's all complete at the end. Landscape, painting, curtains, furniture, getting to the end of the job so that the house feels complete. The value is not in having an 80% half done job. You have to have the budget that goes right through. And so it's worth compressing the house a bit or biting it off so that in any chunk, it's looking finished rather than incomplete because you'll never get your money back on an incomplete house. Now this is a worker's cottage. This is lead paint. It needs to be scaffolded. The guys, the painters need for workplace health and safety to be in full, full protective gear and there's a whole bunch of rules about all this stuff. To paint this house cost 80 grand. This is a worker's cottage. Imagine if you've got a larger house with lead paint get that tested because it's a major expense. It takes a chunk, two rooms, off the size of the renovation with a fixed price contract. A really great way to throw away money is to get excited about you buying a small house and you fix up a bit here and fix up a bit there because you're going to renovate it later down the track. I can't tell you how many times I've been on the site and they've said, oh, we've, we've done up the bathroom and now we're going to lift the house. But where will the stairs go? Well, they should have been where the bathroom went in. The bathroom should have been in another location. And now they've just, they've got a compromised design or they're just throwing money away. Don't do that. It's worth taking the long-term view 
and getting the lasting value and seeking uh, opinions from your professional consultants and builders and people like that so that you might work out a master planning strategy that you can tackle the easy things. One good thing might be, why don't you plant up your backyard? It's not that expensive. And five and 10 years down the track, you've got a gorgeous backyard. The fence is fixed. It's looking really nice. It's been growing for five years. That's pretty cheap and you can just get on with it. So you can do a master planning strategy, saves a lot of money. We do that often and it's really a sensible way of doing it. So back to the beginning again. Here we are at the starting starting point. Once the owners knew what was what their options were, they knew what they were up for with town planning, they could work out a strategy. They love the area. It's going to be fantastic in the long run. It's well worth it. They did have the choice that they can either go down that track and renovate and do all that work or they could have sold. They instead decided to bite the bullet, go for it. And this is what we ended up with. This house hasn't been raised. We dug in underneath. We avoided all town planning. And now they've got this fantastic house, which is all this living quality in an inner urban environment. Now that's lasting value. So if you're thinking of going down that process, get in touch with us.